Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about cybersecurity, having a career in technology as well as work vlogs. So recently I made a video on the top 10 highest paid jobs in tech and now I wanted to niche down a little bit and focus on the top paid jobs in cybersecurity. And I'll also be linking all the sources I used for this video in the links below. And just as a disclaimer, all of these salaries will vary significantly based on what city and state you're living in, the cost of living, as well as the background experience that you have. Okay, so starting with number 10 on this list is the information security analyst who make about $95,500 per year on average. Again, take into account that this will vary significantly by the city, state, country, the sector that you're working in, but info security analysts are ranked as the number four best jobs in the US. So there's a lot of demand for your skills as well as obviously really great pay. The main reason why I think information security analysts make a pretty good average salary is because there is such a wide range of things that they do. I often see information security analysts and cybersecurity analysts titles and roles being used interchangeably. They are usually the ones focusing on manning the different tools and applications that your company has to keep the network and the perimeter more secure. So if you think of all of the company's information systems and all of the users that use them, information security analysts are the ones that are keeping those users and those applications and whatever data that is housed in those applications secure from outside threats or different threat actors in nation states. So I've made a few videos on cybersecurity analysts or info security analysts. So I won't go too in detail because I'm sure you guys have heard this before. And I will link any relevant videos in the description below if you want to learn more about info security analysts. But for the most part, your day-to-day -day responsibilities will really be around monitoring, preventing, and detecting different threats as well as responding to different incidents that might be happening in your company. Okay, so the next role is an information systems security engineer who make on average about $107,000 per year. Now these two roles right in the beginning, right off the bat, are really gonna be related to that last video I made on cybersecurity analysts versus cybersecurity engineers. And I will link that video down below if you wanna learn more. But if you think about it at a high level, an information system security engineer is a person who builds the tools that an information security analyst will use to prevent, detect, respond to different incidents related to cybersecurity. So basically as an info systems engineer, you're going to be building out platforms, implementing different solutions, planning and building out infrastructure. So you're really the brains behind the platforms and the tools that security analysts use. So a lot of the day-to-day -day that you would be focusing on might be coding, troubleshooting, working with development and infrastructure teams to kind of figure out what fits into your company's infrastructure and environment to keep your company more secure. And as we all know, if you're working in technology, there's likely going to be a lot of things going wrong, a lot of things breaking down, bugs that pop up, vulnerabilities, and cybersecurity engineers or info system security engineers are the ones that are gonna be working hands-on. They're really the ones that are doing the groundwork to be able to fix those, to be able to implement new features or bug fixes. Basically the ones doing that hands-on technical work so that analysts can do their jobs more seamlessly. So you'll likely be maintaining any existing infrastructure that is in your company's environment, as well as planning for and implementing new systems to keep up with the latest technology trends and preventing malicious attackers from getting into your system. The next role is a senior systems engineer. And on average, they make about $110,000 per year. So if you think about it this way, a information system security engineer works basically hand in hand with senior systems engineers because systems engineers are the ones that are managing the day to day of designing and maintaining the systems that your company uses to do their business. So while the information system security engineer is primarily focus on the security of a system or the security of infrastructure. A senior systems engineer is focused on the system at a holistic level and not just at a security level. So they focus on what kind of servers are we using, when are we patching them for upgrades, the day-to-day -day admin things of maintaining servers and databases and infrastructure. And if there's some kind of disaster that went on, they're the ones that are also focused on disaster recovery and making sure that there is some kind of fallback plan for when data centers go down, when data servers go down, when the main infrastructure is capable of keeping up with different demands. They're the ones that are building out those systems to make sure that business still goes on as usual. And they do work hand in hand with security teams or information system security engineers to kind of make sure all the holes are plugged for security at a holistic level. So both of these roles really work hand in hand to make your company a safer place and to make sure that all of your infrastructure and servers and company assets are kept secure and available. All right, so the next role is an information security manager. For an information security manager, you can expect to make about $118,000 on average per year. So for this role as a manager, you're likely not gonna be doing the hands-on work in terms of setting up different infrastructure or implementing things. Um, you're really gonna be focused on the planning and the strategy side. 
So information security managers are the ones that, that basically take policies, protocols, responsibilities, and any other form of governance or compliance things that your company needs and requires in all of their technology platforms and infrastructures and basically translate those into actual technical capabilities and requirements. So at a very high level, information security managers are the ones that take those policies and requirements from the business side or the compliance side and then passes them over to the relevant technical teams that can actually take those and, and convert them into something tangible like a firewall rule or a access rule or something that will prevent users from doing something that they're not supposed to be doing. So basically you can kind of think of them as the bridge between more technical teams as well as the business side or the compliance side and they really focus on revealing those updates to policies and configurations that your organization has and regularly ensures that your team or your company's applications and tools and platforms are kept up to date and up to scope with whatever policies that are being implemented at your company level but also in a sector level if you're working in a sector where cybersecurity is very important like the health sector or a government and as an information security manager, you might also be managing teams of your own. There are some roles that might be people managers and some roles that might be focused on managing certain platforms or certain technologies. So it really depends on what you're looking for and what kinds of company assets and resources that you would be interested in managing. So with that, the next role is an ethical hacker who makes about $119,000 on average per year. So honestly, I feel that this number may be a little inflated, but it really depends. For example, if you're starting out as a pen tester and maybe you have one to two years of experience, you're likely not going to get this kind of average salary compared to an ethical hacker who has five, 10, 15 years of pen testing and hacking experience. But again, take all these numbers with a grain of salt because they can really vary depending on what company you go into, the size of the company, how big their security team is, as well as the sector that you're going into. Because like I mentioned earlier, fields like government or healthcare are really gonna care a lot more about cybersecurity than a company, let's say, that's more focused on marketing because you're just not dealing with as much sensitive data compared to health and government sectors. So if you're on my channel, you likely know what an ethical hacker is, but just at a high level, an ethical hacker is someone who takes a application. It could be a web application, a server, it could be hardware, it could be entire systems, and basically taking those, analyzing them, trying to find holes and ways into the application that could be abused to somehow steal data, impersonate users, elevate privileges, and things like that. So essentially, you're probably looking for the OWASP top 10, which is the top 10 security vulnerabilities for web applications. And I've also made a video that summarizes the OWASP top 10 at a high level to be more understandable for beginners. And I can also link that video down below. And I would also say that an ethical hacker slash pen tester slash red teamer, of course, there are probably different levels because so many companies interchangeably use these titles and roles. It can really depend on what experience level that you have that will give you more insight into what salary that you're gonna get. But I would say that ethical hackers are probably the coolest role in cybersecurity in my opinion, just because you basically get to hack into things for a living. Of course, you yourself are not doing anything malicious, but you're protecting a company's assets, customer data, and honestly, it's probably also one of the most fulfilling roles in cybersecurity. But of course, you're getting a higher average salary because ethical hackers need to have the skills and knowledge necessary to be able to hack into a system and basically take advantage of it. So it can take years and years of getting that experience and knowledge using new technologies. And every year there's another development framework or a new language or a new technology. And of course, as an ethical hacker, you also have to keep up with those newest trends and hacks and be able to learn those tools to be able to stay relevant in this field. So there's a lot of learning and a lot of keeping up with news and hack related topics and technologies. Okay, so the next role is, is a network or IT security architect who make on average about $127,000 per year. So if you think about an architect, that is someone who basically lays out the plans and foundations of a company's infrastructure. And in this case, it could be network infrastructure as well as the platform and the hardware that your company is going to use. And they'll also be working with different infrastructure engineers or network engineers, and that will be taking basically this architecture plan to build out. So you can kind of compare this to the previous role, which was a senior systems engineer who basically plans out the design for an entire system, but a network or IT security architect plans out the design for an entire network or an organization's entire security infrastructure. So there's a lot more that goes into planning at such a high level. You need to have a really good background and in-depth knowledge about what technologies work well together and basically being able to take separate components and modules in a company's environment and connect them together in a cohesive way that doesn't allow things to fall through the cracks. Because a lot of times the issue with building out these large scale infrastructures is that there might be something that you didn't think about or, or something that the team missed and it's really your responsibility to be able to know exactly what needs to go into your company's environment and 
and to be able to build that out securely and efficiently. And of course, working with information security managers who will be providing policies from the business side or the compliance side for you to follow and ensure that even though you're building out this infrastructure based on your knowledge, you still should be following the policies and the standards for whatever sector that you're working in to ensure that certain data like personal data or health data is kept more secure than, than data that might just be public or proprietary. So there's really so many moving parts that go into it and you're gonna be working with a lot of different teams and building out large scale infrastructures or networks to be able to help your company stay as secure as possible. So the next two roles I'm actually gonna combine together just because they are pretty similar and could be used interchangeably depending on what company you go into and the size of the company. But this is gonna be a cybersecurity manager or a cybersecurity director. A cybersecurity manager can make about $132,000 on average per year, and a cybersecurity director can make about $140,000 per year on average. So as a cybersecurity director, you're likely the one that is pretty much at the top of the food chain, right below the company CISO, and you're likely going to be the ones creating these policies, approving these different security policies that are going to be rolled down to the rest of the company, or you could be working with organizations and specifically ones that own different policies for whatever sector that you're working in to help create or update or maintain the policies that are going to be passed down to the rest of the company. It's gonna be your job to oversee all the compliance and making sure that your teams are following the right protocols and standards necessary, especially when it comes to local and federal laws that may require you and your company to follow or adhere to a specific standard or policy. You could also be potentially coming up with plans to help train your teams to adhere to the specific standard or coming up with other ways to manage and maintain that upkeep and that's basically at a high level focusing on the security of all of your security applications and platforms and planning out the processes for how your organization is going to be responding to different threats and any other cybersecurity processes that will help the company adhere to the policies that a cybersecurity director or a CISO would have created. Okay, so the last role I have on this list is probably pretty guessable, but it is the CISO. So on average, a CISO can make about $171,000 per year. And for those who aren't familiar, a CISO is the chief information security officer of a company. They are the highest person in terms of a cybersecurity organization at your company, and they're likely reporting to the CEO or anywhere up there with that executive suite. At a high level, the CISO is the one that drives and creates the vision for a cybersecurity organization. They're the ones that are creating and evaluating new ideas to make your company more secure for its customers and its users, but they're also the ones that are creating priority on the things that your security organization is focused on. On. For example, if there are recently a lot of breaches in your company or in your sector, then your CISO is probably creating a strategy to try to prevent those breaches as much as possible. So really a CISO's role is a lot of responsibility and you really have to see into the future what attackers and what malicious actors and nation states are thinking of so then you can get there first without having to risk your company getting attacked or getting breached. So being able to manage all the other security teams and policies and processes and overseeing different organizational security procedures is really gonna to be top of mind along with coming up with future vision plans that may look three, five, 10 years down the line to make sure that your company is still staying secure and still staying on top of the latest technology trends as well as creating the best environment and culture for your security organization to ensure that you can keep hiring the best security professionals. Okay, so that's it for this video. I know I rambled a lot definitely let me know in the comments below which roles that you might be interested in or which roles that you might be trying to get into now. I'd also love to hear if there's any roles I missed because of course there are hundreds and hundreds of roles, even thousands of roles out there in cybersecurity and lots of new ones are being formed every single year. So definitely drop a comment below if you have any questions about any of these roles that I've listed in this video. And if you found this video helpful and liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.